Welcome parents to the Bree Pennsylvania Parent Program, Peak Flow Meters and Exercise. I'm Jessica Schumann, Certified Asthma Educator and Nurse with Breathe Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining me today. Breathe Pennsylvania is a nonprofit organization that covers a 10 county service area in Western Pennsylvania. Our mission is to empower Western Pennsylvanians to breathe better and live healthier through education and awareness of lung health in our community. As you can see on the slide, we have numerous different programs, direct lung disease education, patient assistance programs. We work with children in schools with asthma, with our school asthma initiative, sleep apnea programs, asthma day, tuberculosis education programs, smokeless Saturday, and smoke free for life. To hear more about these programs, please visit our website at www breathepa.org. So what is exercise-induced asthma, or EIA? During exercise, the muscles require more oxygen. This requirement starts to lead us to feel short of breath. When we become short of breath, we start to tire. We then switch to mouth breathing, and that's which stops us from filtering out allergens and ir irritants. And an inhalation of the cooler, drier air, because we're breathing through the mouth, contributes to the lungs' asthmatic response. So changes in the lungs occur. This breathlessness that occurs during EIA does not improve quickly as someone without exercise-induced asthma and could take 20 to 30 minutes to resolve or even prolong for hours. In the last slide, I spoke about changes that occur when we start to breathe in the irritants, the allergens, and the drier air. Our lungs have an asthmatic response. Three things happen. The muscles around the airways start to tighten or squeeze. This is why we hear a wheeze. The airway walls start to swell and the excess mucus is produced and we begin to cough to release it. So what does exercise induced asthma feel like? First, you need to identify if you're winded or you actually have exercise induced asthma. People who are winded will quickly bounce back within just a couple minutes. Like I said in the slide before, People who have exercise-induced asthma, it will prolong for 20 to 30 minutes or even hours. Exercise-induced asthmatics will have all of these symptoms or some of these symptoms during and after exercise. Shortness of breath, cough, chest tightness, and or wheezing. So how is exercise-induced asthma diagnosed? It's very important that if you're showing any of those signs or symptoms, that you speak to your doctor and have it, it properly diagnosed. They will do an exercise challenge test. During this test, the doctor will watch your oxygen and heart rate while you run on a treadmill. This will show the doctor if exercise triggers your asthma symptoms. When they're in doing the analysis of the test, they will look for specific decreases in either or both of the following numbers. Your peak expiratory flow or your PEF. This is measured with a tool called a peak flow meter. It shows how air is flowing out of the lungs. They may also look at the forced expiratory volume in one second or the FEV1. This is measured with a spirometer this shows the maximum amount of air uh, that you can forcefully exhale in one second. So let's talk about the peak flow meter. This is an asthma management tool. It's very easy and it's non-invasive. It's a handheld device that measures your peak expiratory volume. It can reveal the narrowing of the airways well in advance of an asthma attack. 
A drop in a peak flow signals that you need medicine or rest, and it can also red flag exercise-induced asthma. First, slide off the protective top cover and unfold the bottom cover into a handle. Make sure the indicator is at the bottom of the scale. Then stand up straight, breathe in as deeply as you can, and put your lips firmly around the mouthpiece. The special oval mouthpiece helps you make a tight, comfortable seal with your mouth. Blow out as hard and fast as you can. Read the peak flow value next to the indicator, then slide it back down to the bottom of the scale. Write down your reading. Repeat this procedure two more times. So to review from the video, your peak flow meter technique would be to stand up, reset the red indicator to zero, take a deep breath in, place mouthpiece in your mouth and make sure a tight seal with your lips. Blow hard and fast. You're gonna record the number as reading number one and then repeat the steps one through five for two or more times to record the numbers as reading number two and three. Okay, so let's talk about setting up a peak flow meter zone. A peak flow meter zone can be set up and coordinate with your asthma action plan, or the zones can help you see if there's changes in the lungs. To set up zones, you're gonna record peak flow meter readings in the morning before breakfast and the afternoon for two weeks. You must be at peak health during all your recording period. You record three measurements in the AM and three in the PM. After two weeks, the recordings will show a consistent or a highest number. This number becomes your personal best number or PBN. So let's look at an example on the next slide. To set up peak flow meter zones, you have to start by doing three readings in the morning and three readings in the afternoon for 14 days at peak health. Every day before breakfast, you will blow into the peak flow meter and record a number and each recording will happen three times. In the afternoon, you'll do the same thing. As you can see in the chart on October 1st, we did three readings in the morning of 300 315 and 300, and three in the PM, 300, 300, and 310. Once you are done with the recordings, you will start to see a consistent number, which is the highest. We have highlighted in the screen that 315 is the best and the highest number, which becomes the personal best number. Now let's set up the zones with using equations. Using the example from the previous screen, we determined that our personal best number after 14 days was 315. To determine the green zone, we take our PBN or personal best number times 0.8. This equals the green zone or the 80% or better. If we take that number from our example of 315, we times it by 0.8, which equals 252. We then would take the green and yellow arrow on the peak flow meter and set it to 252. To determine the red zone, again, we would take the personal best number and we would times it in equation by 0.5. This equals our red zone or 50% or less value. So what we would do is take our example number of 315 times 0.5, which gives us an answer of 157.5. We would round that number to a whole number of 158. 
on our peak flow meter, we would set our yellow and red arrow to the 158. The yellow arrow is going to sit between your green and red zone. So what does this mean for our patient? So here is an example of what the peak flow meter looks like. We are setting our arrow tabs with the zones. So as you can see, the green and yellow arrow is set at 252, which means that number 252 or higher will be in the green zone. The red and yellow arrow is set at 158. The number below 158 would be considered the red zone and anything between 252 and 158 is now the yellow zone. So if we were to blow into the peak flow meter and the number we hit was above 252, our airways would be open. If we would hit a number between 252 and 158, we would be in a caution zone. This would be, we would proceed to use our inhaler. If we hit a number below 158, this is a medical emergency and we need to call 911 or our doctor immediately. So let's review again what the zones mean. You can look at the zones like a stoplight. If you're in the green zone, that means you're doing well. When we're driving and we're at a green light, we proceed forward. We have no signs of cough or wheeze, chest tightness or shortness of breath. We continue our activities as usual, and we may continue to take any prescribed long-term control medicine, such as inhaled corticosteroids. Please note, not all asthmatics are prescribed long-term control medications. If we're at a yellow light, we need to slow down. In a yellow zone, that means that we're getting worse. That means that we may see some coughs, wheeze, chest tightness, or shortness of breath and we may be waking up at night. We can do some of our activities, but some may be more difficult. At this point in time, it's important to use our quick relief medication or albuterol. In the red zone, at a red light, we have to stop. We have to make sure that we understand that this is a medical alert. At this point, we may be very short of breath, and quick relief medication may not help, and you cannot do your normal activities. Symptoms sometimes are no better after 24 hours, and you need to get medical help right away. So let's put together the asthma action plan and the peak flow meter zones. As you can see in the asthma action plan on the slide, there is a peak flow meter personal best number line. Remember that 315 we used in the example? That was the number that we put through the equations to determine our green, yellow, and red zones. We can also look at it as symptoms. Again, green, no, no wheeze, no cough. You're able to sleep and play. You may have to continue using your controller medication if it is prescribed. And you may have to use so much quick reliever medicine before exercise if you're diagnosed with exercise-induced asthma. Green zone means you're blowing out greater than 80% of your personal best. When you're looking at the yellow zone, that means we're having symptoms. It means we're only blowing out 50 to 79% of our personal best. We are wheezing or we're coughing. We may not be sleeping well, and we are short of breath during most of our activities. Again, we wanna continue that controller medication, and we may need to take so many puffs of our rescuer quick relief medication per our doctor's orders. And if you're actually having problems after so many minutes, you may need to call your doctor and they will tell you how to proceed forward. If you're in the red zone, again, this is a medical emergency and we need to get help right away. When you're looking at it with your peak flow meter, anything less than that 50% personal best is, is not good. Your asthma medicine is not helping and you're definitely getting worse. You're very short of breath 
and your quick reliever medication doesn't seem to be making you feel better. You need to call 911 if there are danger signs like trouble walking or talking and your fingernails are gray or blue. You wanna take your quick reliever medication per your doctor's order, so many puffs per every so often, and you definitely need to call your physician immediately. Some very exciting news. We now have our Asthma Action Workbook available to download from our website at www.breathepa.org. You can choose English or five additional languages, Arabic, Spanish, Nepali, Somali, or Swahili. This workbook will help you understand the changes in the lungs, how to use a spacer and a peak flow meter, understanding early warning signs and triggers, and also has a perforated asthma action plan in included. Please go to our website to download yours today. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Jessica Schumann, nurse and certified asthma educator with Breathe Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoyed this 15-minute parent program series. Please continue to watch for more in the future.